In this video, we're going to take a look at how to complete an isometric cube drawing using our basic tools, our pencil, our ruler, and our protractor. If you don't have a protractor, there is a digital version available for you posted in our Google Classroom. So to complete this drawing, first we need to have a completed border and title strip. If you don't recall how to complete that, there is a video available in our classroom explaining it. So here is my border and title strip, and I need to add an isometric cube drawing into this. So these are the directions that are posted in our classroom that you can reference at any point. So it talks about the angles that we're going to use. It outlines right here the height, width, and depth measurements will all be one and a half inches. And then our erased lines or our construction lines are going to be very light and not visible. The first thing we need to do is step one, which is lay out the isometric axes. And the term isometric means equal measure. So what we're saying is that these, uh, all of our measurements are going to be equal, as you can see in this bottom drawing here. Pay attention to the note that the horizontal baseline should be two inches above the top of the title strip. And then we are going to have to manually locate this vertical line here. We will not be able to use the center line as noted here in our directions. So going back to our paper, what we need to do is we need to put our baseline two inches up from the top of our title strip. And I'm going to do this just like I've done all of my other measuring. I'm going to measure from the top of the title strip, not from the, base, the bottom of the border, but from the top of the title strip. I'm going to measure up my side one, two inches and put a mark. And then on the opposite end of my paper, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so here's my mark there. Now I can connect those two lines, or those two marks. Just a reminder, in this video, I'm going to draw my lines pretty dark so that you can see them clearly. But when you are doing your drawing, you will want to draw these lines lightly so that you can darken your final product um, and have your construction, construction lines disappear into the background. So now I need to find the center of this line. And to do that, I'm going to just measure the total width of my space, which should be 10 and a half inches, according to the directions in our in creating our border and title strip. And I'm going to put a mark in the center of that. Half of 10 and a, 10 and a half is five and a quarter. So I'm going to put a mark right there. And then I'm going to put that same mark along the top edge of my border as well. And now I've got marks that I can connect a line and get my vertical line up the center of my paper. So this is now my center point, and this vertical line is going to become the front edge of my isometric cube. I need to draw my two lines extending from my vertex right here 30 degrees in each direction. So I'm going to carefully place my protractor directly over that point with my black lines here setting perfectly on my baseline and my vertical center line lines up with the 90 degree mark, which is good. So I've got to mark 30 degrees in each direction. So on this side, I'm going to count 10, 20, 30, which lines up with 150. And I'm going to put a mark there. And then on the other side, 10, 20, 30, and I'm going to put a mark right there. 
Now I need to connect my vertex to those marks that I just made. Again, I am drawing much darker than you want to draw when you do this. And now I have my isometric axes laid out. The next thing I need to do is I need to measure my sides, which are going to be one and a half inches up in each direction. So I can set my ruler here at one and a half. Put a mark. Measure this way. One and a half and put a mark. Now I need to get vertical lines coming off of these points. So to do that, what I'm going to do, um, there are a couple of ways that I can do this. One option would be to use my protractor, and I can set my baseline right on this 30 degree line that I've just created. And then I can put my my marking line up here at 120. That's going to give me a vertical line from that point. And I can connect those two points. And that's probably going to be your simplest option. So I'm going to recreate that same, uh, that same line on the other side. Putting my mark up here at 120 and drawing my vertical line. Now, all of our sides measure one and a half inches. So my next step is going to be measuring straight up all of my vertical lines one and a half inches. There's one. There's the second one. And there's the third one. And now I can connect these points here and here. And this is going to set the top edge of my box for me. Okay, the final part of this is to connect my lines this way. And this line needs to be parallel. The line I'm about to draw here needs to be parallel with this one. So what I can do um, is I'm going to use my protractor and I know that this line that I'm using is a 30 degree line so from horizontal it is measured up 30 degrees so as I'm looking for my point over here <clears throat> Um, you can see that this line coming off here, if this is th angled 30 degrees, this is zero, and then this is another 30 degrees, you can see that my line is in line with the 60 degree mark. So I'm going to slide my protractor up to my outer point over here, maintaining the same angle, and getting my protractor lined up with that point, and I'm going to put a mark out here at 60 degrees. Now when I connect these two lines, that's going to give me a parallel edge here with this one here. My final step is going to be connecting this new intersection here with my point on the other side. And now 
all of my drawing is complete and what remains is to simply come back and darken these lines. The lines that I need to darken are these two right here, these two right here, these two right here, and my three vertical lines. Taking care to only darken the lines in between the points. I don't want to darken them all the way up to all of these positions. A properly darkened isometric cube will look like this. So this is what a properly darkened isometric cube should look like. Um, I have not erased any lines from this original drawing. All of the, the lines that I drew were drawn light enough that when the main part of the drawing is darkened in, it comes to the forefront and all of the construction lines kind of fade to the background. And so that's why it's important for you to use very light construction lines so that you can come back and darken in your final shape. Once you get to this point, all we need to do is fill in our border and title strip with our date, our school information, our drawing name, which will be isometric cube, and your name over here. And then you can take a screenshot of this and post it into the assignment in our Google Classroom.